So you just got back from your doctor and he or she told you that your DHA levels are too high and you're wondering how serious of a problem this might be and if DHEA might be causing some of your symptoms. Well, hey there, I'm Dr. Hagmeyer and in today's video, I'm gonna review some of the most common reasons why your DHA levels are elevated and that's assuming that you're not taking DHEA in the form of a supplement. So DHEA is a hormone that your body naturally produces in the adrenal glands. Those are the glands that regulate fight or flight. DHEA helps produce other hormones, including things like testosterone and estrogen. And healthy levels of DHEA prevent or mitigate mood disorders, especially things like depression and anxiety. It also helps improve cognitive and memory functions in older adults. DHEA also combats the metabolic and vascular disorders that cause aging in the brain. But what happens when these DHA levels are too high? And what might be some of the reasons your DHA levels came back elevated, either on a blood test or on saliva testing? Well, let's start with some of the more common symptoms of high DHA, which would be things like fatigue, weight gain, acne, hair loss, irritability, and really depending on uh, why your DHA levels are elevated can come with a whole host of other symptoms, which I'll get into in, in just a moment. But let's get into the most common cause of elevated DHA. And, and again, this is something I see very often in females, um, female patients who have PCOS, so polycystic ovarian syndrome. This is probably one of, hands down, one of the most common causes of high DHEA levels in women. Uh, PCOS is a common hormone imbalance. It's often characterized by high estrogen, low progesterone. You often see high insulin levels, high testosterone levels, high DHEA levels, and high blood sugar. For women with PCOS, they can develop very severe acne along the chin and along the jawline. They can develop facial hair, black hair, uh, because of, again, the imbalance uh, in testosterone and some of the androgens, their menstrual cycle can stop. Again, these are all very uh, common symptoms of high DHEA and high testosterone. You see, DHEA and testosterone are known as your androgens, and when women have too much of these androgens, they can suffer with a whole host of problems. Fertility issues, thyroid problems, hair loss. And if I forgot to say, DHEA is a precursor to testosterone, meaning that if you have too much DHEA, this can lead to having too much testosterone. This is again why women really shouldn't take DHA without having proper hormone testing done in the first place. Every month I have at least one, two new patients who started taking DHEA without getting any initial labs done and now their hormone problems went from bad to worse. Okay, so don't let that happen to you. Now with that being said, that shouldn't scare you, but you never want to start taking hormones without first getting some baseline testing done. Uh, and then of course following up a few months later with retesting. So again, make sure that your hormones are staying in those appropriate ranges. Another reason we see elevated levels of DHEA, again, is a problem with the adrenal glands known as non-classical adrenal hyperplasia. It's a mouthful, but non-classical adrenal hyperplasia is a problem with the adrenal glands where they don't produce uh, an enzyme called 21-hydroxylase. And so while most of what you'll read on the internet will talk about this happening in infants, we see this in our practice uh, as well with patients who have been told they have PCOS or thyroid problems or Hashimoto's because again, the symptoms uh, of these all uh, basically are identical and without testing, it's impossible to know. But in non-classical adrenal hyperplasia, because of the problem with this 21-hydroxylase enzyme, you're gonna see problems with many different hormones that we can test for. So often we see set, uh, high levels of 17-hydroxyprogesterone, high progesterone levels, high DHA levels, high testosterone. Again, these hormone levels being elevated have to do with the fact that this enzyme is not working properly and it's not being uh, converting, it's not allowing other hormones to be interconverted. Some of the symptoms of non-classical adrenal hyperplasia are very similar to, again, women with PCOS. You see irregular menstrual cycles, usually long cycles, maybe missing periods, cycles where there's no ovulation, excess facial hair, excess body hair, um, male pattern uh, hair loss or baldness, acne, and especially cystic acne, very, very common. When I see that, usually a dead giveaway. The next cause of elevated DHEA, and this one's a little bit trickier because again, it depends on how soon you catch it, is chronic stress or post-traumatic stress disorder. In PTSD and chronic stress, mental stress obviously stimulates a string of reactions in the brain in the hypothalamus or the HPA axis, which increases the production of certain hormones. Now, acute stress shows up with high cortisol and high DHEA, but chronic stress as we see in many patients who don't get proper diagnosis, they have low cortisol levels and very often low DHEA. And again, the difference between acute and chronic. Um, high levels of prolactin are another cause of high DHEA levels. Prolactin is a hormone that stimulates and promotes um, in, in females um, uh, lactation. 
And so again, uh, we see this in women who are breastfeeding. Again, high prolactin levels tend to suppress the menstrual cycle, which is why uh, women who have high prolactin levels experience irregular menstrual cycles or infertility, maybe menopausal symptoms, hot flashes, vaginal dryness. If elevated levels of prolactin continue for years, you actually start to see signs of problems with bones, so osteoporosis and osteopenia. Believe it or not, men can also have elevated levels of prolactin, and what we see there is uh, low testosterone, low sperm production, low sex drive, problems with erection, and of course, um, their, their pectoralis muscles, their chest muscles become more feminine. They begin to develop fat tissues there. Um, so again, how is high DHA levels treated, right? Well, that's a tough question to answer in a video like this because ultimately the treatment plan is really largely dependent on the root cause or root causes of why you have high DHA levels in the first place. But some general, generalizations, it might be herbs that modulate the stress response, things like ashwagandha, rhodiola, elithero, L-theanine and other adrenal adaptogens. It might be nutritional support aimed at revitalizing adrenal gland function. If you have a, uh, insulin resistance or diabetes or hypoglycemia treatment might be aimed at trying to get better control of your blood sugar and the prevention of spikes in insulin. In some women, treatment may be focused on balancing neurotransmitters and methylation pathways and improving gut health. Sometimes treatment might be behavioral therapy. In some cases, again, treatment might be focused on androgen blockers or natural medicines that block the production of testosterone and DHEA. So here's the thing. If you feel discouraged because you have high DHEA levels, don't be. Uh, there's a lot of tools in the toolbox out there for women who have high levels of DHEA. And I hope that today's video just answers a few of those questions that surround DHEA and why those levels are high. If you have questions about today's video, the best way for me to answer those is if you drop me a comment in the, in, or a question in the section below. If you have questions about becoming a patient and learning more about my big picture approach, you can visit my website to learn more. And lastly, there are several different guides that are available. Some are on PCOS, some are on gut health. Uh, but I also have a video out there called Troubleshooting Adrenal Fatigue, which talks more about adrenal gland function, stress, DHEA, cortisol. And so do me a favor. If after you watch today's video, give it a thumbs up. Um, I recommend that you also watch this next video.